Skardu. Skardu, Skardu. People have been telling me to go to Skardu for about one year. And finally, just a couple of weeks ago, I got to see Skardu for myself. And now, I want to tell you whether it's worth going to Skardu, or whether perhaps you should go to the neighboring Hunza instead. Hmm, much to be revealed in this video. But first of all, let me tell you a little bit about Skardu. Skardu is basically the gateway to all the other attractions and places all across Baltistan, which is part of Gilgit Baltistan. This is where you would come if you wanted to access places like K2, Diosai Plains, or even Nanga Parbat. I'm gonna give you a little spoiler, Skardu left a really special impression on me. But I'm gonna go back to the beginning and tell you all about my journey. There are two ways to get to Skardu from the rest of Pakistan and let's take Islamabad as an example. You can either fly or you can take the road. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you. If you take the road, it's gonna be a really long journey, probably about 20 hours and that is without the possibility of landslides. But along the way, you're gonna get to see some incredible places, including the valleys of Naran and possibly Kahan, as well as Babusar Pass. Babusar Pass is basically a road that goes up to over 4,170 meters. That is really, really high. And then you'll get to drive along part of the Karakoram Highway, probably the most scenic road in the world. And then at one point you're gonna turn off onto a tiny little road that's not very well maintained. And eventually after about 10 hours, you might get to Skardu. <laughs> I didn't have that much time, so I flew. Here's the thing about the flight. It set me back $200 for a one hour flight. Ugh. And that's all because there is only one airline serving this route, which means they basically have a monopoly. Doesn't matter, ultimately the views out of the window more than made up for it. <sighs> Lovely. You fly into Skardu among some of the world's most majestic peaks and you land at what is probably one of the most scenic airports in the world. I am not exaggerating. Our friend Mustafa, that's Mustafa right there, picked us up from the airport in his big 4x4 and that was really the beginning of our Skardu adventure. Nothing could quite prepare me for what I saw next. To be honest with you guys, I expected Skardu to be a little bit like Hunza, but it is not at all like Hunza except for the really crazy massive mountains. In Hunza, you've got the one big road, the Karakoram Highway, that directs all traffic in a singular direction. In Skardu, there is no such road. And the blossom comes late in Skardu as well, much later than in Hunza, which means that we had the place all to ourselves. It was practically empty, which was great, but it did have some drawbacks. For example, some places being literally shut down. So this is the famous Lower Kachura Lake in Skardu. The one that you see in all the pictures, the heart-shaped one with the amazing resort. The resort is closed. You just get on with it and you find alternatives. This is Upper Katura Lake. Guys, we have a lot to cover and very little time, so I'm gonna whiz through all the other places I saw in Skardu very quickly so that you can decide whether it's worth going there or not. After Upper Kachura Lake, we decided to make our way towards Shigar Fort. On our way to Shigar Fort, out of the corner of my eye, out of the window of the car, I caught a glimpse of a place that looked really quite interesting. So we had to take our 4x4 and drive down this really tiny little dirt track until we got to a place that looked like a pasture in the middle of the mountains, right by a winding blue river. I've always imagined places like this to be oasis in the middle of a desert, and right here you've got an oasis in the middle of the mountains, surrounded by rock. Rock inhospitable, inaccessible rock. And yet, here we are. 
Anyway, from this green pasture, we continued along our way to Shigar Fort. I had seen pictures of Shigar Fort before, but there's a few things that I only found out once I got there. Shigar Fort is a 17th century fort, which is kind of nestled in the middle of the mountains, and its name apparently translates to Rock Fort, or the Fort on the Rock. It was recently restored by the Agahan Foundation, and now there is a really lovely boutique hotel in the fort, so yes, guests can actually stay inside the fort, in the fort rooms, isn't that cool? But it is quite pricey, so not really for most people's budgets. From Shiga Fort, we continued along the way towards Mantoka Waterfall. It was a good couple of hours before we got there, because the road is really quite bumpy, and although the drive is really slow, it is oh so scenic. Eventually, we arrived at Mantoka Waterfall. It's really pretty and you can have lunch there, you can have some freshly caught river trout right in the restaurant at Mantoka Waterfall. From Mantoka Waterfall we went back to Skardu along that ever bumpy road and on the way we stopped at the place that for me topped all the other places I've seen probably in the north of Pakistan. Trust me, this one's good. Welcome to the Safranga Cold Desert. This place is an actual desert with sand and sand dunes and all that jazz but it's not anywhere in the south of the country. It's actually at an elevation of a good couple thousand meters above sea level in the middle of the Karakoram Mountains. Landscapes like this are things that you normally see in like fantasy drawings and fantasy films. It didn't seem real. I could not get my head around the fact that this place is really real. It's right there. The cold desert of Skadu. And by the way, it's not the only one. Okay, there's just one more place that I really want to share with you. And if you are not familiar with the religious history of Pakistan, you're going to be pretty surprised about this one. Because we stumbled upon a place called the giant Buddha rock. Yes, this is an actual stone carving that depicts the Buddha. This statue was created in the 9th century. That's about 1200 years ago. Given the fact that Pakistan is an Islamic Republic and probably not very widely known for religious diversity, this is pretty surprising. But it's only one of the many Buddha rocks dotted across the northern parts of Pakistan. Okay guys, that's it for me. I wanted to show you what I saw of Skardu and I'm sure there's a lot that I missed so I can't wait to go back and see the rest. So here's my argument for going to Skardu over Hunza. By going to Skardu, I believe that you will be contributing towards the evening out of tourism across the north. Because as many people know, there are many attractions and destinations in the north that are right now suffering from over tourism, especially in Skardu's neighboring Hunza. So yes, Skardu might be a slightly more difficult destination to get to, the road might be a bit more bumpy, the infrastructure of restaurants and hotels may not be as well developed as Hunza, but you'll be seeing a place that is so beautiful, so mind-blowingly epic, and doing something good for tourism in Pakistan too. Thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, I had a blast in Skardu and I hope to be back very very soon. And I will see you guys in the next vlog.